Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we have with us today Rebecca Richards, who's the co-director of the Belmont Gallery of Arts, and Elaine Hawks, curator of the, of the gallery's Art Heals exhibit. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Welcome, Rebecca and Elaine, um, you know, to talk with us today about the Belmont Gallery of Arts new exhibit, Art Heals. And I'll just say that after a full year of pandemic and a very divisive town election just behind us, I'm intrigued by this exhibit and how art can help us heal with the, heal the things that are difficult for us in life. Um, so, um, Rebecca, let, let me let me start with you and ask, um, you know, about the Belmont Gallery of Art and and how conceptually this exhibit uh, uh, got its start. So thank you, Mike. Um, the Belmont Gallery of Art um, has been, uh, we opened in 2005. So we've been um, in the community for well over a decade now. And um, we had to close March 13th, like so many other places in 2020 due to the COVID pandemic. Um, and we started thinking about exhibits, how we could pivot into a virtual space, but also exhibits that would somehow uplift people in this very challenging time. And I had actually been aware of Elaine Hawks as an art therapist um, in the Boston area for quite some time, as somebody myself who's been involved with the visual arts for a long time. She was one of those people whose name just kept popping up, you know, um, every few years. And she actually is, is a working artist herself, and she has been an, in shows in the BGA. And so several years, well before COVID, I had talked with Elaine about the possibility of curating an exhibit at the gallery. And she was interested and intrigued. And um, things didn't really, like there were no opportunities that really presented themselves until this year and the time was right. And when I approached her again, she said she was very interested. And so again, keeping with the BGA's sort of year long focus on uplifting art things that bring us together, celebrate our common humanity, or the struggles that we're also having as well. I thought Elaine would be the perfect curator for that. So Elaine, let me ask you, this is your first time curating an exhibit. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, pro professionally, you are someone who is a mental health therapist and, and work with, um, with art in, in terms of, of your therapy. So tell us about this exhibit and, and, and what you're aiming for. Yeah, so it is my first time doing it. And Nadine and Rebecca have been so helpful. It's been kind of the three of us doing it together and figuring things out. But um, it's been it's been interesting talking with them about it as we look at the different art and to try to figure out how we react to different art pieces. And I know that when I was looking at the art that people were bringing in, the artist statements were as important to me as what the art actually was. Because for me, kind of the process the person goes through and their awareness and recognition of the process is as important as the art itself. So, so um, Elaine, can I, can I ask you to tell us about, um, you know, um, some of the pieces in this show, how you selected the artists and, um, and um, what, what the significance of, of, of your selections for this exhibit are? Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I think the three of us sat down and kind of looked through the different pieces and they did seem to kind of fall into different areas like um, art that the artist did to kind of get away from upsetting feelings um, during the pandemic, other times when people are feeling really upset and using their art to express their feelings and work through their feelings. And then some of the pieces were art that were really, you could tell the person and they would talk about this, that they were kind of in the flow, that the art was meditative, that it felt transcendent for them and kind of spiritual so and then there were some overlaps but so we were kind of looking at all the different varieties of art in that way and then also thinking about what our own reactions were to the art even as we were seeing what the artists did and their own reactions through their artist statement so it was a very interesting process let, let me ask you know at, so so um you know one can go to the website um and you'll have that information for us in a, in a moment, I believe. Um, 
one can go to the website, uh, take a look at the pictures and the artist statements. Um, what 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 is it that you're hoping that people walk away with, or or is that just something that um, you know it, it's going to be a little bit different from for everyone? Um, I I can I'll try to speak to that for for just a moment, Mike. Um, I think what you just said is very true. That every you know each individual is going to have a different response and reaction to the art that they're viewing. Um, one thing that Elaine mentioned, which is really a critical piece of this show. Um, is the artist statements. And when we put out the call for art, um, we said it absolutely it was required that you submit um, a statement that explained to, you know, myself, Elaine and Nadine, what, you know, um, the background of this piece, the process that you went through as you were creating it, et cetera, what, what Elaine was just describing. So that was really very important. That's not always a requirement for the for shows at the BGA. But it really put the art in a certain context. And I think the, the visitors that we've already had to the virtual gallery, the people who have been signing the guest book, everybody has been re, re, reacting to those artist statements mm -hmm. and how powerful they are in combination with, with the piece of art that the artist has submitted as well. Um, so I think that when, what I want people to walk away from is you like, you know, every art, like you, you feel you have an emotional reaction to art, you know, um, when we're viewing a piece of art. And so I want people to just really, I mean, all of the emotions that the feelings that Elaine was just describing, it might be a transcendent experience for the, for the visitor, for the viewer of the art as well. We want people to ultimately, I think, walk away with a sense of we're all connected to each other and we all have our struggles and art is one, um, you know, it's one way of, you know, helping with some of the struggles. And again, we've had such a challenging last year and we want people to come away feeling uh, hopeful and uplifted and, and connected to each other. Mm -hmm. So, so let me, let me ask both of you, um, uh, Rebecca and Elaine, you know, I, I think that, that, you know, w whether we believe we're artists or not, there, there is some potential for, for um, artistic expression in all of us. And, and so I'd like to ask, you know, is is one of your aims um, um, with this exhibit and and with the, the the other work of the Belmont Gallery of Art to you know encourage more engagement and expression of of the arts in the community to tap some of that you know in some cases um, unknown talent that may already be out there that we uh, just don't I guess, know about. Elaine, I'll speak to that just briefly. Um, Yes, the answer is yes. And so one of the, the missions of the, the Belmont Gallery from the start is we are a very welcoming space and um, we work very hard to encourage what we call emerging artists as well as more established artists to submit work. And I think as Elaine has seen in this process, that's, that's what we have. I mean, we have some artists who have submitted work who have been in many, many, many shows you know, throughout New England. And we have people, this may have been their first or second um, show that they've submitted work to. So we try to be very encouraging, welcoming, and um, and make people feel like it's a place where, um, you know, there's a possibility that their work will be shown and exposed to the public. I do want to say, I have to give a shout out to my co-director, Dean Storer, who put in countless hours mm. to, um, put together like the building of this show on the website, which was very time consuming. Um, and it's it's a beautiful show. I think Elaine, I mean, her work is amazing. Um, and so I think that when people do visit the virtual BGA.org, um, they will see what, what a beautiful experience it is. And one of the things with pivoting to a virtual show is that we have, we're not limited by four walls so we can actually display more art for people to enjoy. So that's the, that's been one very positive aspect mm -hmm. of um, creating the virtual space. Rebecca, tell, tell us where we can find the virtual exhibit and how long it will be open. So you can find the virtual exhibit at uh, www.virtualbga.org. And the show actually opened on April 1st. And it's going to continue officially through the end of May. But, you know, when you have a virtual space, it can continue well beyond that. And I do want to mention that we have an opening reception this Friday at 7 p.m. And people should go 
onto the virtual space to get information. You need a link, a Zoom link to attend the reception. Elaine has put together a very powerful presentation um, you know, for the reception. And Sarah Ellison, who is a local cellist with the Handel and Haydn Society, will also be performing, as well as John Williams, who is a very accomplished artist. So we're going to have a very full reception Um, And I cannot thank, again, Elaine Hawks enough because she brought something really important and valuable to um, putting this show together. And we really appreciate what she's done. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca Richards, co-director of the Belmont Gallery of Art and Elaine Hawks, who's uh, the curator of the new exhibit um, at the Belmont Gallery of Art, Art Heals. And I wanna thank everyone for watching. This has been News Now at the Belmont Journal, and I'm Mike Crowley, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.